Fire Radio. Hey everybody, Jeremy National Fire Radio. Welcome back to the podcast today. A gentleman who said no. I said, Mike, join me on the podcast. Mike says no. He <laughs> says, I got nothing to talk about. I don't want to talk about myself. And I go, no, no, you should, you should join me. And you still said no. Yeah. I'm... And yet here you, and yet here you are today. I mean, to start off, I want to thank you for, you know, inviting me to be on your show. And then I know I said no, because I'm not big about talking about myself and, you know, until you have a few drinks in me, then I'll, you know, I'll shut up. But I get it. <laughs> I totally get it. But you know what? Like I, I tell a lot of guys, a lot of guys are like, no, nah, I don't want to do it. And I'm like, no, I need you to, because the the beautiful thing about this is it's my show. So I get to pick and choose who I want to hear from because I want to know more about you or your story. And frankly, it's not really, to me, it's not really an interview, right? Like the way I like to do it and make it a conversation, you know, talk back and forth. But everybody's got their ideas, thoughts, and opinions on the fire service. And so I like to hear from guys that I respect and, and guys that have, you know, their own thoughts and opinions about the job. And so that's why I wanted to have you on today. So let's not talk about you at all How about that. <laughs> yeah. Until I start talking about myself. <laughs> yeah. Well, you, yeah. And all of a sudden you're talking about yourself. Yeah. Uh, Mike Riley, 18 years with the West orange, New Jersey fire department, another Jersey guy on here with me, uh, 24 years total in the fire service, grew up in the volunteers, your career guy today. And you find yourself to be one of the senior guys in your department with 18 years on, right? Yeah. When I got on it, West Orange, uh, West Orange is a small job, no? Uh, it's about medium size. We have 88 guys, five companies. Uh, when I got oh, okay. on, we were a little bigger. That's bigger than I thought we, it was. Okay. We've shrunk since then, since I've gotten on. But uh, we had four okay. engines, one truck, and a rescue. Now we got rid of one of the engines for additional rescue. And I don't mean heavy rescue. I mean ambulance. We just call it the rescue right. because we used to have a first aid squad, and they called theirs the squad, so. I got it. I got it. I think um, so. Now you're down to what? Three and one. Yeah. And then three, one and ambulances. Rescues. Yeah, two ambulances. Okay, two rescues. Okay, got it. How does that work? Do you guys rotate through or? Uh, it's seniority based. Um, I okay. haven't been on the rescue in a long time. Luckily. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, basically, like your first five six years, you're on it, and then or not permanently. I say your first year, you're on it, and then you actually your first right. year. Sorry, you rotate between all the houses. So that way you get time on all the rigs. And yep. then once you're done your first year, they banish you to rescue. And you, you stay on that, you know, for a year or two. And then you, until you, you just until pray you find that they got guys, they're yeah. hiring. <laughs> yeah, you just pray there's another class of guys coming up right behind you. Yeah. I get it. I think that's part of it. I think there's a lot of things learned when you run the ambulance your first couple of years. But the problem is, though, when I talk to guys, um, when you get spread between whether you're jumping from the engine to the ambulance or – you know, or or if you're just running one over the other for a period of time, I think that's the better approach because when you're jumping from one to the other all the time, you get no consistency, right? Yeah. I mean, I, I honestly think that uh, in the beginning, the rotating is good. Uh, they like to stick a lot of the new guys at my company, two company, which we joke around. We get the least amount of calls and the most amount of fires, whereas everybody else are running all day long, fire alarms, medicals, sure. gas, and us, if we get something, usually it's something good. Uh, we do yeah. get the, you know, we do get the occasional like lift assist, overdose, that kind of stuff for medical wise. But our engines don't go on uh, any medical calls unless it's unresponsive or pediatric. Okay, right, life saving. Okay, that makes sense. And then eighteen years there, so you you told me before you found yourself today to be one of the more senior guys in the department, right? Yeah, when I got on, I was uh, twenty four years old in West Orange, and I was the youngest one by at least ten years. And then, like, everyone wow. was in their late 40s or 50s. Like, I was very young. And now, with 18 years, I am not one of the oldest, but I would say I'm only 42. But I would say I'm, I'm fourth in the entire department for seniority and number one in my, uh, on my tour. <laughs> okay. It's crazy. So, let me We're ask very you. Very young you, department. Yeah, when you came in, well, most departments are trending that way, you know, and that's, that's really where we are today. Um, let me ask you this. When you first came in at 24, your next guy was 10 years your senior, right? And then you had guys older than that. Yeah, there might that. have been one guy that was like six years, but most of the guys were like in their late 30s, early 40s, or even old, even older. Like all the captains were like old salty dogs. Like you were afraid so what of did captains that... and deputies back then. Now yeah, they're all what like did the that... same age. 
what did that look like for you? Or did you feel like you were on an island? Like, you know, uh, trying, well, I mean. Being a volunteer, I thought I knew what uh, it was going to be like. But when you go from a, a, a great volunteer department, because they had a great, like, training schedule and that kind of, they were good. We only did 200 calls with SXLs around. And then we, ha- we averaged, like, one good fire, maybe two a year. And then right. the rest was all mutual aid. For in town, right. it was just a very wealthy town, very high maintenance. It wasn't, we didn't get that many runs for, to get experience. Um, but with West Orange, my first year, I wouldn't say a rude awakening. It just, uh, everything's hundred percent faster. Uh, a lot more calls the difference between 200 calls a year and 8,400 calls is a big, big jump. Sure. And then also, sure. you know, just dealing with a professional, professional level. I always, a lot of people that I know that volunteer say that, you know, they're just as good. And then all the, and then a lot of the career guys dump on that saying, oh, they're nowhere near us. But the truth is. You get, I I work with volunteers right now that are just as good or better, and then vice versa in the career world. It just depends on how into the job you are or yes. your passion level. Like for me, I love going to fires. There's nothing more than I love going to fires. Well, now maybe a little because I'm more mature and older. It's more about family, but everything else still want to go to fires. Like I'm waking, I woke sure. up this morning, four o'clock this morning, for a brush fire. Got out of bed, drove down the road, hopped in a rig, went to a brush fire. <laughs> With my Let's go. Yeah. So I'm like, I, I'm, not missing, know, I'm not missing a job. I'm, I'm with you on that, right? Like I, I have, uh, I still, you said something to me before I hit record and I'm fumbling over my words a little bit because I find myself to be the same way. And then I, I find that some of the other guys around me, their excitement doesn't match mine. Meaning yeah. like you got up to go to a brush fire in the middle of the night for your volunteer department. And some guys would find that as a chore or a task, and I you mean, find that as it like is, depending on if it's like a, you know, I a get it, call, but, but when, you still got to do it, you know. And uh, but you're stretching a line. Like yeah. I look at any time I can stretch a line. I always look at the other. I look at the guys around me. I go, guys, it's better than a CO alarm. Yeah, I mean, I'm a I'm a truck guy at heart. Let's say, but okay, I'm a, I'm on an engine with all three of my departments. Uh, with my first department was engine company. I was never on a truck company other than maybe one year with my career department. And uh, or on overtime, I caught a few good jobs where I was overtime on the truck and I got some crazy stories with that. But other than that, I'm an engine guy. I love the engine. But, you know, who doesn't like opening it up and seeing all that beautiful fire and then getting to, you know, pull people out and whatnot. When you when you came in, you you said to me uh, before we started recording, you said that um, you're a quiet and calm guy. Yeah, and then they can rile you up really oh, quick, every morning, and I, you become. I don't do say it. this, but all right. So every morning I'll go in, I'll go in and punch in, and I'm like an old man. I'm like, I'm, I got my coffee, and I'm like, morning, <laughs> morning. That's that's what you'll get out of me, morning. It's the same routine every single day. I get all right. like jammed, like on the way in. It's like calm on the highway, and once they get into town, I'm checking the town out. I'm checking out the streets. I'm checking Love out the that. people, the traffic flow, like the buildings. We have new construction. Everywhere we have new uh, mm-hmm. mid rises. You know the five story where the the first floor is all cinder block and metal, and the rest yep. is all wood above it. So, you know we're we're a big town, and we're probably like the fourth biggest department in the county for Essex County, as far as manpower, right. population, and runs. Right. And uh, right. so it's always changing. So on the way in, I'm concentrating on that, and then you know I got the music pumping, and then uh, get a little riled <laughs> up, but then I kind of calm down as I go in. And then I go in, and then it's kind of hard because the guys in tour three, they're just like the guys in tour four. They're meat eaters. They want fires, and then like they know they're going to get it out of me. And like I try, like I know when they have fires. You know, like we all talk. You see it on social media. Sure, of course. And tour three's been running hot, and they've been getting fires. And yeah, yeah. So it, we, when you come in, you got to play it cool. But they know, and then they get me all riled up, and I'll be ranting and raving <laughs> about like you know. While this piece of the rig's not working, or you know that kind of stuff, and uh, new training coming up, and motivating guys to to get. Yeah. But I'm luckily the crew I have. I worked with the same one guy, so we have three man engine uh, crews. So the same, I worked with the same crew for eight years, and then we had mm-hmm. a captain retire, and then we actually had he passed away um, mm. right after retirement due to uh, uh, issue with surgery he had, routine Yikes. surgery, which was yeah. A uh, huge loss, so, and probably yeah, one of the most geez. aggressive. Uh, he was a captain, but one of the aggressive firemen I ever met. And between him and a couple other people, is the reason 
way that I am, just being aggressive and into the job. And, you know, he was all about it, and he didn't give a shit. Unapologetic, it, man. Yeah, no, not at all. He he was the kind of guy that, like, he would shove in your face if you didn't like it. And he would get guys into the job, and he was very aggressive. Like, you know, everything from, like, scream, Like, he yelled at us. He Sorry, he kept this equal uh, at the company level, at the, at the house, the station, on any call. We get a fire, he'd be, like, yelling at us to go faster. We got to get there driving over sidewalks, over lawns, just like <laughs> yeah, he, we were he That's awesome. to last. Yeah. Very yeah. aggressive. When we get there, he'd go right to the deputy, his big thing. And it's now mine is all the other deputies on, um, mutual aid. We train a lot with our mutual aid companies. Uh, right. so we're friendly with their deputies. We go right up to them and we're like, Hey, West Orange and two are here. Like, what the fuck do you need right now? We're ready to go. We're not waiting. Like, we don't want to be the guy who just says, oh, we're here, and we'll stand off to the side, and if you need us, right. not, no, we want to do something. Yeah, we've come, you want to we've hit come the to work. we'll do it. You want to stretch lines, we're doing it, but put us to work. Yeah. So, like, see, this is what I'm getting at. Like, in the morning, they get me all riled up, and I get going, <laughs> and just start rambling well, on. But there's so much to that, but I, I love, I want to kind of rewind just a little bit, right? Because even before you get to the firehouse, you were talking about your morning routine. And it's getting in the mindset, right? And it's like you have that opportunity on the career side that as you're driving into work, you can start putting yourself in the mindset of where you need to be for the day, right? So you got 24 hours coming up on the way in. I'm looking at traffic. I'm looking at the at the town, the weather, the I'm going to take a different way in today or all, whatever those things are, just playing the music to get fired up, like whatever it takes. But everybody's got their routine. Yeah. But that's part of the mindset, right? Yeah. And you know, I don't think I've even told anybody that before. Just, it's just mm. something that I've done yes. basically my whole career. And I do take the same way in, but every once in a while, if I have to run an errand, like say if I need to get coffee because I was running late, which me running late, we don't have to be at work till eight. So that means you have to be there at seven 30. If you're past seven 30, you're one of those, you know, yeah. you're late I'm talking about you. So me being, yeah. me being late is seven 15. Right. I'm at work at seven twelve at the latest normally, or seven o'clock, and I got that from my my captain, who was mo- probably the most senior captain on the job at the time, the one that passed away, and yeah. uh, he was at work at six fifty to the point where you're bothering the tour before. Now when I come in, I'm quiet. All the lights are off. You know, you know, you just gotta get in, get my gear ready, and you know, go from there. And then once they start like you know coming out and everyone starts getting riled up, and it's you know between like Union Let's get Riley fired or, up. Oh, yeah. Let's get him they, fired up. They love that because I, I always come in quiet, always. And no matter how good of a mood I'm in, if I had a great night the night before coming in, I'm quite low-key. And the second my captain comes in, uh, his nickname, his name's Tommy Hayes, but we call him T-Bone. He's just a giant, and he's jacked, big dude. And, right. uh, you know, he always riles everybody up. And there's a couple other guys, the, the Tour 3 captain. You know, he knows how to push my buttons, and there's a couple guys. And the Tour 3 guys are all, like, they call themselves, like, they're like the Bulldogs. They're all like big jack dudes, and they all get riled up. Right. They love going to jobs. Right. So. Yep. Well, I think there's there's so much fun to that because, I mean, it's the it's the characters in the firehouse, and it's, you know, we know how to push each other's buttons, but we want to surround ourselves with guys that want to do the same that I want to do, right? And if you love to go to fires, the last thing you need is a guy on your engine or your tour or even a tour before you or the tour replacing you like a stick in the mud, man. Like we, there's no room for that. Right. Like yeah. 18, 18 years in 24 total in the fire service. You're still getting excited for stretching a line on a brush fire. I think you're supposed to, I get I really excited do. going on uh, routine fire alarms, hoping it would be turned into a fire. Cause I've had something more, a handful of times where it came in as a, you know, an audible alarm, fire alarm going off and we get there and there's fire showing or right. One even better. We got a report of uh, an odor, of something burning. We get there, the, the police department, like two officers are inside talking to their homeowner in the kitchen. And they're like, yeah, we smell something burning. So we get there, I was on, the, overtime, I was on the ladder. So they're like, all right, Riley, check the basement. I go in the basement, nothing. They're like, go to the second floor, get to the second floor. And I'm like, I got a stronger odor, but no smoke, no fire, nothing, clear as day. And then as I'm turning to walk back down the stairs, I see like a string hanging, a little pull cord. So I pull it and it's just, Floor to ceiling, Yahtzee. fire, Yahtzee. fire comes rolling down. I got the biggest <laughs> smile on my face, but I had to dive 
I I wasn't masked up. I had my gear on. I was ready to go. But yeah, sure. I had to dive into the bathroom because the fire came down, hit the floor, caught the carpet on fire, and then and he's getting ready to cancel units coming in. And I was like, yeah, we got wow. heavy fire on you know third floor, and then they made everyone come back in. And then I masked up real quick in the bathroom, climbed up the uh, I pulled down the pull down ladder, climbed up there with the hook and started hooking all the insulation. She had like clothes hanging, but the fire was all held back because she had brand new windows on the third floor. It was a two yep. and a half story wood frame, nothing showing right. because those new windows held back all that fire, and I, it was going good. So yeah. that was that was like one of the first times that found it. Yeah, that like you know you show up and you're thinking it's nothing. You think maybe it's like a a, a ballast or something else, but it right. ended up it was good fire. I I love that. I really do. I mean, those are the moments, right? That, that makes for great stories and so on. But it also goes to the expectation of what our jobs are and and to be ready to go. Yeah. You know, that, you know, if you weren't up there, if you didn't have your, your pack on, right, what are you doing now? You're running back out, right? Yeah, you're calling you don't ever for a line. That guy. You can't be. You're I mean, out of position. Yeah. And as far as, I mean, I was on the ladder, so there's no excuses not having anything ready. Uh, a lot of guys on the engine, like the chauffeur, the driver, um, some guys don't gear up. Me, I always right. put my bunkers, my jacket on. It, it all depends on the type of call, but I like to dress complete in all my stuff. And this is a car fire, but the chauffeurs, you know, we're wearing a turnout, but I'm not wearing my CBA. So if you ever see any pictures of me at a car fire, I'm not wearing my CBAs because I'm driving. So I'm not putting the right. fire out, but I'll be taking windows, yeah, I get putting it. the hood open, that kind of yeah. stuff. You know, you got to do – I would rather be ready than have to get there and be like, oh, shit, and I have to get ready. What did that What did that look like for you, like, growing up? I mean, you having the next couple guys being much older than you – um, was it more about shut up kid, just you're along for the ride, like we've been doing uh, this a you know, while? Or back then they were you... they were they they were all been there, done that. They went to a lot of jobs. Right. And uh right. it was it was hard. There was some guys that were motivated, but not a lot. And not to put anyone down because when it came down to a fire, all these guys, no matter how old or how fat or whatever, they would walk all over you, all the new guys. Like they were right. fast. Mm -hmm. So it didn't matter. Um, but like in the downtime, they just, you know, they didn't want to have to do anything, you know? Yeah, I so, get like, it. Now, I, I all totally the younger guys, it. they want to go to fires. They want to train. So it's a little right. bit better now. But it was a uh, little, little more serious, more on calls, and more laid back as far as the downtime, which isn't much, depending yeah. on what rig you're on, actually. Some rigs, well, you I think relax, and some rigs, you, you're nonstop. Yeah, but, you know, there's, there's also times where – you can take a knee, man. Like, and I think that's the important part is like recognizing that in, in the day, right. Is like, you know, tonight or today, it's not the day. Like, you know, sometimes training is, is not sometimes yeah. it's finding a task to do together at the kitchen table and not, and that's, that's training for the day. Like you can't, I don't think you can beat it up into guys. Like yeah. you, you have to find no, a fine balance. It's like, yeah. I love training and I love training, especially the new guys, because right. I, I feel like there's a big disconnect between the academy and what we actually do on the job. Now, like in no the academy doubt. now, now they're like, they're telling everyone, oh, you're going to do things different in your department. But there's also like the difference between the academy and the real world. Just training the new guys on everything from like when you're in the academy, they're, they're showing you how to throw a 24 foot ladder with two guys and like positions and names and how to lift it. Yeah. I'm like, it's not real. The one man job. The ladder weighs 72 pounds, grow up, throw the shit on your shoulder, grab some tools, and you're throwing it yourself. You're not you don't not looking for someone else to do that. There's too much going on. Especially with a three man truck, a three man engine, two man rescue. You're not we're not, you know, our manpower is it's twenty two man tours, seventeen man minimum. So And that's and that's what I think is really interesting in, in the conversation, right? Is that um you still have the same amount of jobs that have to be done regardless of how many people you have on the rig, right? So if yeah. you're running the three-man engine, you're going to have to do the same amount of work as the five-man engine because yeah. we have to get that line in place. We have to open up ahead of us if the truck's not there. There's duties to do, just like a truck. If we have to get searches done, ladders thrown, roofs cut, whatever the priorities are, Yeah. right? The work doesn't, the work doesn't stop because we don't have enough people. Yeah, just so like for like you said, with the truck, for instance, our chauffeur, the driver's job, show up, good placement. You don't park, you know, get the stick to the roof, and depending on where the fire is, the top floor fire, 
or if it's bloom frame, you're going up to the roof. Where the other, where the um, captain and the uh, sorry, the the irons is going to go in and do a search, locate the fire, right. look for victims, the whole nine. Whereas, and then you're going to cut a hole in the roof and then meet them down there, and then but also our rescues a little difference. All our ambulances. We have two. Yeah. When they get on scene, one's right. going to be like Brit, but not really, because Essex County's funny. We don't really do Brit. None of our guys are Brit certified. It's not like I know Morris County, like all the other departments are like trained in Brit and have to be certified. Essex County doesn't. It, Brit doesn't exist really. Like they called for Brit, but the second you get there for mutual aid, you're grabbing a line going in or grabbing hooks and going and opening up. So back to what I was saying on the rescue, when you get there, you're doing truck work. Both rescues are doing truck work. If it's outside vent, going to the roof or, or continuing a search. Right. So, I mean, I've pulled up a couple times where I've made even grabs on the rescue. First do, you know, boot the door, go in, locate the fire, and then, you know, remove like a dog or whatever. And, uh, like, I'm not waiting for an engine. You don't need water. No. You know, if, if, you're, right. if you you know, grab a can if you want. I'm, I'm big on just grabbing a hook, going in. You know, look at the fire. Let the first two engine know, hey – you know, fires on the in the kitchen, you know, uh, eighty corner, and go from there and search your way out. Like I'm not going to stand around and wait. Yeah, did did that mentality? Uh, you know, th- you mentioned the disconnect, right, um, between fire school and reality, and it takes boots on the ground guys to tutor and mentor you to figure out that part of the job, right? Because we can we'll we'll teach you the book and we'll teach you to check boxes, but reality is on the street. Yeah, super important. Did you have with those salty guys that you grew up with in the firehouse that were you know much older than you? They really set the bar high and showed you what it was like to work on the street. Depending on the crew, but yeah, definitely. Uh, you learned a lot from them and stuff you wouldn't even think about. Like for like, for instance, like. BS call, let's say, uh, a wire down or wires low in the street because a truck, box truck came down, took it down wires. I had right. this one captain that showed me you can take caution tape, wrap it around the wire, throw it up over the other wires, come down, and then you can pull that wire back up. Like little That's stuff cool. like that. And I'm like, right. what do we think of this stuff? Because we're so used to just right. trying to, you know, we get like a 24, throw it to the house and try and rehook it up. If it can't, we'll cut it. Right. That's like, it's like a, a nonsense call, but it's got to get done. But like you learn little things like that. There's a lot of stuff, even at even at fires. Like I don't know where I can go from here, but <laughs> there's just so well, much no. Stuff. I mean, no, you're you're you're, you're absolutely right. But you learn you know what you learn more at fires than you do around the uh, like now. We'll go to fires, and a lot of guys will talk about you know what we did, and I'm big on t- uh, discussing what I fucked up. Like if I love that. Why would you talk about like, oh, I did this great, you know, I, and I rescued that dog. All right, cool. But like, you don't learn from shit you do well. That's something you right. <laughs> mastered or like trained to do. So whenever I train or learn something new, because I don't know everything, I like to, you, you know, try it out the next fire. If I can do it then, you know, I'm big on that. So yeah. any training I take or any uh, time I instruct, I like to, you know, learn from my experiences and I'll learn from other people and then use it. And if it works for me, I, it works. But if it doesn't work for me, I'm not going to use it. Just because, like, so you know, right? Some guy was like, "This is the best thing ever." Right. You know, it all depends. If, what if it works for you? Well, that's vetting your information, department. right? Because there's a thousand ways to do it. What works best for you and what's best for me might not be the best for Mike Riley. And so, yeah. you know, but that's where experience matters, right? Because when you have opportunity to put what you've been taught or what you've read or seen to actual practicality, it's no longer theory, right? You now are learning practically, this does work, this doesn't work, it might work, I need a couple more reps with this. Like, there's all of that. Yeah. Mentorship for you, how important was it? I had good mentors and I had bad mentors, but I learned from both, like, what not to do. And, like, you know, you you had club close calls, and you're like, all right, I'm doing that fucking again. (laughs) (laughs) I've been there. And then you learn, I don't know. I mean, I had some really good mentors that were, like, father figures. But did you know know they were influential in your growth in the fire service when when you were a student of theirs? Meaning, like, so I I, I got into this interesting conversation. About, I really, I wish I, I paid more attention to a lot that's of the scene. where I'm going with me it. now. I cringe when guys are talking about like senior captains when they go, and I'm like, great, you're leaving. That's not what I want. 
we need the senior guys to teach yeah. all these new guys. Like we just hired eight. We're hiring. We have two in the academy right now. We before that was another ten or eight. We're just constantly coming in. Guys are constantly leaving. They just uh, had a guy thirty one years, and they just made him retire. Um, you know, we're, yeah. we're losing a lot of knowledge and experience over like guys that like younger captains. I'm not saying they don't know the job. I'm not saying anything bad about them because you know they they just lack the experience. Yeah. And they have to rely on the senior guys to not help them out, but like guide them a certain way until they get the point. You said something really interesting to me, and you kind of took it right to where I was where I was heading, and I loved it. Was you wish you were more aware then of what you were absorbing from them? Yeah, and when, I, when you come in, I, you're all piss and vinegar. You know, you're you're you think you know everything. I was a volunteer before, but like I said before, it, it's it's not night and day. But the volume's different in calls, the type of calls, because of the city that you work in. Whereas you come from a little borough and then you're in a township. I mean, we have 48,000 pe- people on paper, but like probably closer to 100,000 in reality because they right. wouldn't change the census. But we're, it's, it's a <laughs> busy course. town that should be a city, but it's not. Yeah. I just – I love um, uh, being open to being mentored. Yeah. We don't we talk about mentorship, we talk about guys finding themselves in a mentorship role and a senior guy and the importance of the senior guy. But I I've been talking about this lately and um it's allowing yourself to be open to be mentored. Um yeah. if you you know, growing up in the fire service for me, like I thought I knew everything and I was God's gift when I was younger and I couldn't be told differently and I wish you know, the 47-year-old me now compared to the 20-year-old then, if I could have a conversation with them, it'd be like, you know what, you need to shut up and listen more. There's a lot of 100%. great information around you. But I knew it all, man. I couldn't be told. And it, it only came through maturity did I realize that, man, there's a lot of great people here that have so much to share, but I have to be willing to let them share it with me. And if I yeah. just cut them off... I'm never going to grow myself. And I think personal growth is the most important thing, but you have to allow them in to teach you and to tra- and for you to be willing to listen to somebody else's perspective, point of view, or experience. Yeah, definitely. I mean, all the senior guys that uh, I, I miss a lot of them because they, they brought a lot to the table and you learn a yeah. lot through their experiences. And it, it's uh, and I try to do the same to new guys. I'm not shoving anything down their throat, but you know, if it can speed the process up of doing you know X Y Z rather than them going the far one way, or I just like to explain to them that there's there's a better way, but it doesn't have to be your way. It just uh, like mm. for me, I mean, it's about speed and being aggressive, but I'm not just going and breaking shit, but it's aggressive into the way you carry yourself, the way you do a job, you shouldn't have to be told to do a job. If you're assigned to a position in the rig, do that job. You shouldn't be looking towards your captain like, hey, should I do this? Because if they have to think about it, they're going to probably say no. I we'll do it. I for, love for this. Giving this later, you know, get the job done. I love this because what you're talking about is something that I've been crafting my brain. I haven't talked about it much publicly, um, but it's the permission based firefighting. And yeah. we well, have gotten to a place today in the fire SOPs. service. And then know the ones that you can, like, kind of squeak by and get away without getting in trouble. You know, like, we only have a three-man engine and three-man truck. So depending on what your position is, you need to be able to do that job. I've done VES a handful of times, and there's no one on the ladder with you with the tick. You're in there by yourself, and you're making it happen, and then you got to get the hell out and go to the next window. You don't have time to be like, oh, can I go VES? If you have to ask, it's already too late. You sure to be doing that. We have to we have to find a way to allow that to happen. And I know that sounds ridiculous, but in so many fire departments today, we have leaders, bosses, administrations that don't empower their people to be able to make decisions for themselves. And we've created this permission based where, boss, should I do this? No, not yet. Okay, let me know. Okay, not now? No, not yet. Because they they don't want their people they don't have the confidence in their own skills and abilities to allow their people to work for them because they're worried about their decision making and yeah. so when we when we don't let people make decisions around the firehouse like 
when we're going to eat or when we're going to clean or train or do this or that, and you have to be told all day long all this shit? Yeah. Do you really think your people are going to be able to make a decision on the fire ground for themselves when they have to take a door or take glass or stretch that second line? Or That's the thing that's driving me crazy is that we have this permission-based fire service today where everybody's looking for somebody else to tell them it's okay to go do something. Yeah. It's driving me, it's I'm not, driving me I'm not nuts, saying bro. I'm freelance, but like if a job needs to get done, get it done. And go fucking freelance. I don't care. Make a decision on your own. <laughs> Shit's you know what I'm up. saying? Yeah. I mean, it's my captain, me nuts. Has, my, my captain's a senior captain, and he lets our crew work. We know our jobs. Yes. On the way there, he's already telling us what he's doing. We're telling us what we're going to do. Like, he's not really telling That's us right. what we're going to do. Like, when we get there, we know what we have to do. And That's then, right. like, say, like this month, so. Me and my buddy John, we both don't like driving. I mean, we do. Who doesn't like driving, going to lights and sirens, air horn? That part, Yeah, fun. but I'd rather the nozzle, right? Exactly. So that's like when we first started <laughs> working together, we'd fight. Like, no, I want to be on the nozzle. Right. And then so finally our other, my other captain was like, no, you're going to rotate. And then that's what we've been doing for the last nine years ago or ten years now. Right. Together. And so this month's my month to drive. But I'm aggressive, and I always find my way into a fire. Like if I have to like ah, grab somebody else, put them on the pump – like when I show Same up, way. I don't like the guys that show up to fires and stay at the pump. Like find your own right. water supply. Once you give them water, stretch a backup line to the front door. Throw a ladder. You know, I'm not saying go, go around to the back and make entry, but if like, you know if you have fire in the second, third floor, go in the first floor. There's other things you can do besides standing at the pump. There's pad. work to be done. My yeah. captain actually has like a checklist for new drivers instead of just standing there. Like, you know, position the rig. I like to position the rig. So the cross lays are facing the front door because you're not sure. parked in front of the house. That's for the ladder, the truck. So I'm going to pull past. If I have to pull on the front lawn or in the driveway or on a, or just park on an angle where I'm blocking the street, it's to get that, yes. you know, so I'm not short when we're stretching. Yep. And then even, you know, multiple fires were thrown, thrown up ladders before the truck gets there. Just so not even for rescue, just for our guys that are up there, they get too far in, they need to bail out. They have a, they have a 24 right. the window already. That's right. Ladders are for the brothers, man. Yeah. So yeah, I, mean, like, I we have a very aggressive department. Our like I can't say anything bad about my department. We're extremely aggressive. We're going right in the front door with an inch and three quarter, no matter how big or how small the fire is. And you know we're we're booting the door. We're going in, and then we're going front to back, up front to back, knock it all down. Like we we don't ever show up and like. I don't use the phrase, and I don't like to use the phrase "fully involved." And I've been to fires where you're like, "Oh, you get to report a fully involved house," and I'm like, "You can find a way in. There's livable spaces. You need to just, you know, work around that." And if there's fire I'm in with the front, you. that's not an obstacle. That's your like, that's your objective. Get, you know, knock that out and work right. your way in. Correct. Yeah, I there. There's so much there. I you you have to. Um... You got to have that culture in place, right? Like people coming into your department need to have that expectation and know what's expected of them. And so we are a interior fire department oh, 100%. Who's gonna, that we run cross lays. We're going to stretch. We're going to get to the seat of the fire. We're going to search our way back from the fire, right? Like we have to have a culture that promotes that so that our newest people to our most senior people understand where they fit in in that process. And I think when you don't have clearly defined objectives and, and, uh, in a playbook, that's where we get in trouble in that permission based fire service or firefighters that don't take initiative. It's because they don't know how to, because we haven't set them up for success. Yeah. We gotta, we gotta give them the tools and the blueprint to be able to do their job. Yeah. I like to, I like to grab the new guys and be like, Hey, if you don't have the nozzle in your hand, you should have a set of irons or a tool. Now, if you're going to a house and you're if, if you're first two, set irons. If you're not first two, you don't need an axe and a halogen, like one or the other, because you're going to be opening it up. And if you need to force the interior door, you're not going to need a set of irons, you know. So, like a lot of guys will just show up with like a like a set of irons. It, it all depends on what it is. If you're going to like an apartment building, yeah, you need a set of irons and a can. But if you're going to a house, if the front door is already open. You don't need to bring extra tools. Bring what you need to use, and never show up empty-handed. I've had fires back in the day when we would show up and like the first two engines waiting, like the truck's there, second two engine, no one's got a set of tools. And like, they end up having to like kick the door in or boot it in to get in there. I, and then ever since then, I've been like, all right, from now on, all these new guys, I tell them, I'm like, 
any call. If it's you're putting, if you're getting geared up, you're grabbing a set of tools, getting off the rig. If you're not stretching line, grab a hook and a can, or even on the engine, grab a set of tools. You have to have something. You can't stand there with your thumb up your ass and not have anything. Because when you need something, then you got to run back to the truck, and you make that company. I'm look a, bad. I'm a big fan of firefighters being able to make decisions on the fly, right? Like, hundred percent. You. If the fire ground is fluid. It's dynamic, and you need to be able to make decisions on the, on the run, run and gun, baby. And Definitely. your decisions they have to be representative of what's in front of you. And we have to allow those guys to be able to make those decisions. Yeah, and I, it that just comes with clearly defined, you know, tactics and a culture that allows them to be firemen. Yeah, allows definitely. them to do their job. Yeah, I mean, because they come in, a lot of the new guys, and I'm, I'm, I keep saying that, but it's like we have so many at work now, and uh, yeah. they're all new to me. Like I'm like, I tell each one, I'm like, look, and this sounds like me being an asshole, but I'm like you're new your first five years because my first five years, I thought I knew everything, and I didn't know shit. Okay, 10 years, you know a little bit, but you don't know enough. I'm at 18 years. I know a little bit more, but not enough. Every call, right. every inspection, every medical call, I'm checking – entrances i'm checking fire escapes even on inspections i love doing inspections a lot of guys hate it think it's a waste of time some guys don't mind it me i want to get in there i want to see everyone's like layout of because we have a lot when where i work down the hill it's all multi-families and and apartments so a lot of illegal you know rooms yeah basements attics there'll be you know bunk beds multiple bunk beds so people you know, are living it's in that, all different spaces. So you got to get in it's there. It's that intel. It's that intel that allows you to do your job better. Yeah. Right. That's that's the thing that I find really interesting. Is like I love coming back from runs and taking uh, taking maybe an extra couple of minutes, take the longer way home. So on the way back, you can talk about a job that you had down that street, or you know, you see that building there or that house there. We had a great fire in there five years ago. You know, and then talk about it as you're on your way back to the firehouse oh, right like every time we pass the house that we had a fire out we bring that up again <laughs> like oh remember we had a fire right there? but what is like, a fire there? but what does that there? do right because <laughs> that there's always going to be that one or two kids that never heard the stories before right now yeah. they're tagging along they they're working overtime in your shift or it's a volunteer house and the kid happened to be on your engine today or whatever and now you're talking about something that he's never heard about before or talking about a fire and you talk about, yeah, I remember we gained position there. Or we had this type of condition. That's all part of training, right? But yeah. you have to make an effort to do that. I, it's the same with yeah. doing inspections, right? Yeah, I mean, you're training on any call you go on. You're training your mind to right. pick up little keys, uh, standpipes, exits, bilco doors, the sidewalk bilco doors. Like, you know, a yep. lot of them have sellers that are four foot tall. They run front to back, but they're very narrow. And then you have the bilco doors in the back of houses, which are – they go down a flight of stairs and it goes into a regular basement. And like you pick up on all these little things and even trap doors. Like we have this drugstore in town that underneath where the ca uh, cash register is in the counter, right behind that is a is the only entrance to the basement is a right. like you pull it up. It's a trap door with a little tight stairwell to get down there and it's just loaded with stuff. So if you had a fire down there, the only, I mean, if you didn't know where that was, you probably have to cut a hole in the floor or you would spend a long time trying to find it. Yeah, and I mean, and that's it, man. That's what sets you up for success. When you have a culture like that where you allow your people to learn and to be part of the process, when it's time to go, you've given them the tools, right? And that that's so important, and it just takes work. You got to be willing to put the work in. And, like, when Mike Riley reports to work, he's very subdued in the morning until he gets pushed, and then he's yeah. ready to go, right? True. I love that. Yeah. I think that. I think that's – we need that. Like, I don't – I'm kind of tired of the guys that think it's cool not to be into it. I'm kind of tired of the guys who, I don't know, just think it's not cool to be excited about going to fires. Yeah, I mean, we have a lot of guys that I work with that are excited to go to fires and want to Good. go to fires. And it's like, it's a, like everyone wants to be at two company because they get the most amount of fires. We do all the mutual aid for the county. So we're constantly running a gun, even like – I, was, I wouldn't say this year, but last year and a couple of years before, we would catch a job every shift or every other shift. Nice. And then if we didn't catch one, the shift before us, the shift after us, call one in the neighboring city or neighboring town. That's so great. we're busy. And all the other companies get more calls, fire alarms or car fires, 
for some reason, our town's like crazy busy with car fires. We average, I don't know, maybe 10 a month or more. Like it's on like every other shift, like we come in and I'll see like the, the front bumper will be, you know, all dirty. Yeah, but all repacked right. and it's dirty. Oh, I, I, I clean, we clean all our stuff after every run, but sure, it's still, you know, it gets the way it does because we get so many. And uh, we're not like crazy big uh, like some of the other surrounding towns, but we get enough. And I mean, I, I wish we had more, but. <laughs> Yeah, well, of course. You listen. That makes sense. I get it. I get it. Um, that's cool, though. I mean, so where you are now, eighteen years in, one of the more senior guys in the department. Have you realized that you've become, I don't know, a voice to the young kids? Honestly, not until like this year. Uh, right. <laughs> I've always kind talk of talk about that, talk about so, that. Yeah. I don't like when we do our training, like we do extrication or uh, any kind of rope stuff or any kind of trench stuff or anything that we do um even if it's basic fire i kind of just stayed back and if they need anything i would throw it in there like you know depending on what the training was like we have roof training yeah. and uh you know i'm not gonna keep my mouth shut on this one but you know i like to get in there and teach the new guys little tricks to help them out to make it easier for them make it more comfortable and just something that i've i that i've picked up that if i that i've learned that works for me and if it works for them good and that's what i hope but I don't know. To me, training's really big, and I want the you guys, new guys use, to be comfortable with it and be into it. Use a rotary or chainsaw on the roof. Uh, it depends on the roof. If it's a flat roof or going rotary. If it's a peak, peak now a peak, a pitch roof or a peak roof, whatever, we can use both. But I prefer chainsaw because there's less of a chance of kickback, balance issues. And now, granted, I've only cut six roofs because I'm an engine guy, so I don't. I can't be preaching truck stuff, even though I have. Talk no, I get. Listen, I know you can talk like, about it. I don't want to get out there and I don't like guys that teach stuff that haven't done. It. You're not teaching. You're just talking to me. Yeah. So what I mean, is, like, you've, to me, like, I know how you've to cut. cut you've cut, cut some roofs, so I'm. You know, I'm not the best at it, but I, I know exactly how to get it done, and I know how to do it by myself to knock it out. Sure. But if I'm going off no, the roof, I'm grabbing a chainsaw because I can use it and, and redextrous both hands, and I'll right. you know just lighter. I'm not the biggest guy. I'm five a five eight, and. uh we used to joke around, call our, our uh, crew the Smurf crew because we were all like <laughs> five nine, five eight, five eight, and we were probably the most aggressive assholes at every fire. We yeah, were like obnoxious. It's that the little guys, that little there, guys we'd be pushing people out of the way and shit. It's that little guy syndrome. That's yeah. all the Napoleon syndrome. Well, now it's me and another guy that's five eight, and now my captain's a big dude. So we yeah. call him the Kool Aid right. Man because he just blows through front doors. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, I love that. That's cool. No, I, there's so much to that, man. Um, I, it is important though, for where you are now to, and you're still young, bro. You're, you're young forties. And so you're still young at heart. I mean, you get excited. You, you, it, that's important too. Like the, the whole part of mentoring and being like a senior guy is setting the tone and setting the example too. And so if it's okay for you to get excited and to enjoy the job and to love stretching a line yeah, and, and taking pride in, in ownership in that and, and having fun with it, then you're, you're setting that pace for those young kids to be like, well, if, if, if Mike Riley's having fun with it, why, you know, we should too. Like, this isn't, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. I, there's so much to, we have there's fun so much to call, mentor. No matter what it is. <laughs> you have to, Yeah, you have to, if we're not having fun, you're doing it wrong. Yeah, and I've I've said that to so many people. The fire service is good, man. It's supposed to be fun. We get to do fucking great, cool shit. Yeah, I mean, all the guys on my tour, they're meat eaters. Every single one of them wants it. Yeah, they're all aggressive. They're all great, experienced firemen. Uh, we have a lot of young guys, and even these young guys want it. You know, they they want to go to fires. They want to be at two company. We rotate them in, and the senior guys hate when they come. Uh, even myself, because <laughs> one of us will get booted out and have to go to another That's right. house. Which, Especially if you miss a job. Yeah, oh yeah. So they're going to your job. That's happened a few times. Like, like yeah, we'll, man. We'll, we'll split the month. So I'll be out five or four shifts, and, the, and then John will be out four or five. And then, like, they'll come in. They'll catch a fire. And then, you know, which I hate that I missed, but I'm happy they got that fire. Because some of these yeah, probes are part of the work. process. Some of them are magnets, right. man. I've worked with yeah, some people who had, like, eight jobs in one month, and we're like, all right, you're my new best friend. You're welcome. That you're welcome back here anytime. Yeah. Then they, then they end up getting banished to the rescue, which sucks right. for them because they got, but yeah. they got that experience they needed, and they yeah. got to they, they got to work freely and also see guys work that have done it before. 
you know, and work with more experienced captains. Because usually the house that I'm at, two company, is uh, senior guys. Usually they don't they don't stay uh, more guys that are mature. And the only time you get a younger guy there is if they're rotating him in for you know his pro B year or right. if it's like a change of time or overtime. But usually it's senior guys and everyone at this house I can vouch for. They're all meat eaters. They're all aggressive. They all want to go to fires. See, that's why I love my company so much. The company pride at two company is, is next level. It's like all the other houses have their own mini pride and their own stuff. And, but nothing's like two company. We, I had a retired captain that phrased it the best I've ever heard. And his name was uh, Mike Taylor. Uh, this guy's been in more fires than God. He's like, he's a very aggressive captain. I learned a lot from him. He right. was on tour three, the, the tour before me. So I'd, hear everything like that morning, you know, shift change. Yeah. Right. But he would right. say, he'd say there's the West orange fire department and then there's two company. I love that. And here's the thing. When we go to mutual aid, we have to keep that rep. We don't let guys go mm-hmm. that if, if you're a paycheck fireman or if you're a guy who's just there along for the ride, we don't want you a two company. And now to me, that sounds like everyone's gonna think, all right, he's an asshole for saying that. Maybe I am. I don't, I don't care if you like me or not. I want to work with guys that are aggressive. Want to go to work. I'm not there to be your friend. If you're on my crew, we're going to be friends. We're fucking family. But I'm not there to impress anyone on any other company or any other tour other than we go to mutual aid and we're going to a fire. We're going to be the most aggressive motherfuckers there, and we're going to stretch. We're going to clean up afterwards. We're going to help them clean. When everyone else gets Love would leave, no. We're That's staying. Right. We're cleaning up with them. We're working with them. We're making a good reputation. So when the next call comes in, if we need them, they know that we're a good crew. And also, if we go there, they're like, hey, West Orange Inch 2 wants to work. Put them to work. Where we get a hard task, all these guys are like salty vets. They want to go to work. We're not there. We're not going to hide. We're not going to be the guys in the lawn chair with freaking two and a half in the back of the house hiding, you know, just launching water. <laughs> there's there's so much to that. I mean, the reputation matters. Oh, 100%. And it's, and it's built not just on your hard work, but it's those that came before you. Man. Oh, it's all on the guys before you. You have to keep that up. The house yes. has always been aggressive. We just – Picked up so much mutual aid from, I would say, from 2015, 2019, in October of 2019, we had 14 jobs. Every shift, we were catching work. I have pictures and videos from every single, of all 14 shifts between my own town and neighboring towns. And sometimes we had four jobs in one day where we'd go two fires in one city, have a fire in our city, and then go back to a different city. And then, you know, the more the merrier, keep them coming. We're ready to go. It's a good day. You know, it's a good day. Yeah. I, it's awesome. And, and I just, we, we have to be conscious of that and you maintaining the tempo of your company, right? You're, you're a senior guy there. It's important that people that come in to ride at two company understand where you're coming from, right? right? You have to make sure that that level of service and delivery, the way we're going to perform has to match what this company's always stood for. Oh, 100 percent. First out the door, you know, and if and if we're not first due, we're fucking first due. If you know what I'm saying, we're getting there first. Yep. If we have to pass right. an apparatus on the way there, we're getting there. You know, we're not hanging back. Or if we're second due, we're not gonna be like, oh, let them get there first. So we don't have to pay for it. No, we're out the door fast. We're there fast. We show up. We had a call the other day. Came in a smoke condition. Ended up being the neighbor's chimney. Blew it into their house. It was a BS call. I still opened up the hydrant. Still flushed it. Still got everything right. ready as if it was a fire because if anything turned out Guess to be a fire. it was your month to drive, go. huh? Yeah. And, and it's, yeah. It's, not, it's every tour. Tour one, super aggressive. Tour two, super aggressive. It's all the all four tours at two company are aggressive. I'm not saying the other companies are, but these are the guys that want to go to work. These are the guys that train on their own on their off time. That's right. And then they, you know, they want to get better and promote. For me – I never want to promote because I don't want to leave the house I'm at. I like being so the I was senior gonna, guy. I was going to ask you about that. You know what? Um, I always wanted to be the senior guy, and I never thought I was until I realized that everyone underneath me is younger and less time. But just because well, you have seniority doesn't mean you're better. doesn't mean you have more experience because there's senior guys that haven't done jack shit. Yeah. Just skated. And then there's senior yep. guys that have worked their ass off, trained, like to help out other guys know what they're doing. The chiefs look to them. The captains look to them for, Hey, what do you think? You know, and then go from there. Well, I, I think that's, what's fun about this senior man position, right? Quote unquote, senior man position is it just, 
all of a sudden it's your turn and it happens yeah. overnight. Like you don't it, realize it. And then all of a sudden you go, wait a minute, it's me. You always want like, to be how did that happen? guy. But when you get Until there, you don't want to yeah. be because it's like, yeah. now you don't have any, that person. I mean, if you're lucky to have a senior captain, you got that guy to look up to or that guy to pull info from when you're the most senior guy and something arises and you don't know, you're like, fuck, now I got to figure this out. <laughs> Yeah, so. but but you're the but you're the guy to figure it out. And you know, it's like you hope that your tenure has allowed you to be able to make the right decisions. I think what's really interesting though and what I love what you're talking about with two company right where you are is that the culture is there. Yeah, you yeah. have to protect it and you it's have to make sure that those coming in house you're, in the department it's just like everything that's there is brought in from other tours. Like the department doesn't give us money to, 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 to do certain things unless it's like, right. you know, major. Everything else, we, we have our own soda club. We raise money for like new TVs, furniture, workout equipment, uh, even gear. Like we bring in our own stuff sometimes depending on, you know, I don't want to talk badly about yeah. the department, but we don't get the best stuff. So no, I, when we I do, we do. When, I, we do, when we don't, we don't. So, I mean, I'm yeah. lucky to be on a, a great department. We really are. I can't talk bad about it. All the guys, you know, are, are great at what they do. We knock, we get in there and knock it down quick. So sometimes you wish you weren't as good just so the fire gets a little bigger. But uh, we get in there and knock I it down it. quick. Our guys are good. I really yeah. can't complain. And then the mutual aid companies coming in are just as good. Because we, we work with and train with the mutual aid companies. And two company goes on their own without you know setting it up through the chiefs. We meet at the border with Orange, with the city of Orange, Engine 4. Right. And tower ladder two from east orange and because they're so we're the uh county task force we go out of county to all the major jobs and then in county we're pretty right. much the you know first sec, uh, second alarm due to any of those towns or any of those cities if we're going to right. Irvington, we used to go to Irvington like every shift they're a little quiet lately but they're a busy freaking town we go to newark all the surrounding towns wow. we go to now when we go yeah. to newark we're sitting house coverage i don't want to blow smoke around his ass we're not doing no, i get that. we have gone to scenes yeah. but we don't do much we go to newark they're, they're, they're beast well, New York's, yeah. New York's a big job. Yeah. yeah. But let me, any other let me town ask we you, go to, we're going right to work. Like, we don't do house yeah. coverage. That's another good right. thing. So. Yeah. Well, it's it's a unique area of – Essex County is super unique because there's a lot of smaller departments, right? So smaller cities. We, we in New Jersey, I mean, you're starting to see regionalization in your area, right? Um, what's that, South Essex, I think it South is, Essex, right? So that's Maplewood. Right. Yeah. There's a – township or and then then south orange is a borough they combine them together and then they're a decent sized apartment now but they're still a little smaller than us but uh you know the, uh, yeah, the but guys it's... from i've worked a lot with the guys from engine 32 at maplewood those guys sure. are meat eaters they're aggressive they they're yeah, I know the chief really thing. well like they go to fires yeah. all the time so right. they get a lot of work right but my, what I was getting at is is that that area for uh for new jersey is is kind of unique because there's a lot of uh, career departments on top of each other that are small career departments. Yeah, you know, I mean, small to maybe mid size. But yeah, when I first got on, they were talking about regionalizing us with Orange and East Orange, right? But due to like finance stuff and that kind of stuff, it just kind of went away. Like it was yeah. it was talked about for about a year or two, and then it went away. So yeah, I mean, we we, we, all, big... we all go on the same fires anyway. So yeah, right. But you guys are the biggest out of the three. Uh, so Nork's the biggest in the county. Then it's no, uh, but I mean, out of the oranges, out of the oranges. Oh no, East Orange is bigger. Uh, smaller town, bigger population, bigger department. They have like 170 guys. We're 88. Oh guys. really? Yeah. How many they, companies do they have? They have four companies. We have uh, five, but one of okay. them is just two ambulances, so it's yeah, it. rescue house. Okay. So we have five stations with 88 guys. Um, they have four stations with I think 117. I'm not sure if they count all the administration too, but. It's uh yeah okay. they're a big department. I, we worked with them a lot and Got we it. trained with them a lot. A lot of the guys there that are on their tower ladder because that's the mutual aid rig. Like a lot, I'm Got on it. the I'm also a Revolutionary Fools member mm -hmm. who do all the training and they're all members too. So all these guys that we train with that's cool on tour are also Fools members. We all like group chat together and anytime there's like a training coming up, we all go together. So it's like yeah, the it's West good. Orange crew, the yeah, Orange crew, dialed in. the East Orange crew, Irvington, Maplewood, we all go together. So we all learn this shit together. So that, now, that's something unique, though, because most counties don't do that. And what you don't know about Essex County is West Orange is the center of the county. Everything northwest is volunteer, and anything southeast or south is is career. So all right. the smaller towns 
And Essex County career departments don't call mutual aid to volunteer towns with the exception of maybe one or two, depending on location. And that's probably just for response time, not because they're right. not good or not, not good. you know, it has nothing to do with that. Yeah, it's no, I get response it. Response times. I get and it. then the same mm -hmm. thing, like you get, when I was at Essex Fells firefighter, I was there for like 20 years. I didn't move to like four years ago until Randolph. So when I was there for mutual aid, all the other volunteer towns were mutual aid. Like you right. would never get a paid town in there. So it's, it's vice versa, really. So yep. that's just how no, it kind of worked. I get it. Yeah, no, the system the and it works, right? And yeah. and it listen, it provides you more opportunity to get the fires, right? So yeah. I mean, it's a win. It's a win. Yeah. My Let me ask fire, you this: My first uh, fire when I was 18 years old was in a mutual aid call in to Caldwell from Essex Fells to Caldwell, two and a half story yep. frame fire, second, third floor, right behind the uh, the AMP, right off Bluefield Ave. And I, I didn't even have fire one yet because back then they were like, "Yeah, whatever, do it when you get time," you know. And like this is like this, wow. this was 2000. It was like April 2000 when I was 18. Right. And right. I show up and they're like, "Hey kid, you want to grab the attack line?" And I was like, "I don't know what the fuck I'm doing. I had no clue." Sure do. My on somewhat right. And they're like, "All right." I was the third guy in the line. They went up. They went up. Went up the staircase. Got up to the second floor, landing. And I just remember being like, "All right, it's a little warm up here. This is cool. I have no idea what's going on. Like, I don't know what I'm supposed to be doing. Like, I don't know shit. I'm on. <laughs> I'm a volunteer for like a month or two, and." uh I get up there, and I'm like, all right, it's getting warmer. And now I can see orange everywhere, but not like like the glow of the orange. Right. And, like, they're spraying water, but we're not moving. I'm like, aren't we supposed to move forward? And, like, and like I didn't know what I was doing. And we, I think we went a little bit in the hallway. Not to say I was scared, but, I like, I didn't have a clue what I was doing. I was just like, well, all right, I'm doing it. That's I'm terrifying. I'm, <laughs> I'm the third guy <laughs> back there holding hose. You're like, I'm looking right. around. I don't know. Right. And then oh after, ever since that fire, I was like, forget this. Uh, my volunteer department had a huge training budget and not huge, but big because none of the guys really used it unless it was like a, a department right. thing. So right. I abused the shit out of the training there. I used to pick stuff out of all the academies, like in the state, I was doing stuff like Good. once a month or like every other month I'd pick something. I went to academies that I signed up for and the classes were booked and I showed up anyway. I took the class for free. And then the instructors finally called in on that, and they're like, "This little motherfucker is stealing classes." <laughs> you, yeah, this kid keeps showing up. Yeah, yeah you, I, I, you I got your anything. picture hanging I, up. Have I, you I took, seen this kid? I wasn't even on a truck, but I took truck company class three times in three different academies to pick up new shit. And I, I would it. take the rescue, the firefighter survival. I would take engine classes uh, until I and, like to beat it into me. So when I had my next fire, next job, I could use that. Because like Isn't I remember that what we want fires, from... I was like I didn't have a freaking clue what I was doing. I Isn't knew that I was what we want fun, from our but people, I didn't know though? what I was doing. So I I needed yeah. to learn. I needed to, you know, soak up as much as I possibly could. And then like everybody else, you get beat down for doing too much training. And then when I got on the career department, um, I did a little bit in the beginning, but as time went on, uh, not having the motivation as everybody else, or like they didn't have my motivation to do it. So it kind of pushed me to put it on the back burner and not to sound cheesy or anything, but the first episode I saw of you was with you and Bobby Eckert. And I was like, look <laughs> at this crazy asshole. He's the crazy. He's as crazy as me. And I'm like, yeah. Holy shit. There's someone out there like me that likes to train, that likes to do nothing more than go to fires. And I was just like, I need to meet these two assholes. Cause they're just like me. And I'm I like, all that. I want to do now. And then literally from that year on, I think it was 2019 or 18. I went to training yeah, once a month for 12 months. All hands-on stuff and a few lectures. Any burn I can get into, if it was in-state, out-of-state, I went to something and then got into it. Made friends with a lot of guys, a lot of instructors, and started helping out. I, I worked with Bobby. I worked with Bobby Eckert. Uh, and I, I never yep. worked for him. I worked a lot of jobs with him, like training. Sure. Different academies. Yeah. Um, Mickey Farrell. I learned so mm -hmm. much from him. Like, huge mentor. Sure. He's actually the one that pushed me to do this. <laughs> good and i, and I, I know he's, he's a great dude and i learned a lot from him and then also uh brian butler yeah uh, so sure. from urban fire training I learned a lot from I, him you know when you when you become a student right wherever you are in your career if you're a student you're gonna find people that push you to want to be better and that's exactly this like i get to do this all day long i get that's why I, when i invited you on i i i knew you'd be great and i knew that you have <laughs> No, but I knew that you had a lot of passion to share. Yeah. Well, and that's, the that's what I need, bro. On and on. Yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, but that's what we need. Like, if if it takes, if that's what it takes for you to to share some of your insights and so on, that's fine. I that's we have to look at this and be like, this is what this job's about. We want people excited about it. There's no other way around it. Why do we? We don't want duds, man. Yeah, like we, I'm not like we want those, excitement. Like, super buff, like on the like, I don't buff fires. I mean, if I was like when I was younger, I'd go to fires if I was around, but I, I wasn't really big on that or like. I couldn't tell you what, back then what apparatus I was on, other than it was red and it had five right. gallons of water. Yep. I now I know all that stuff and I know a little bit more, and I picked up on a lot of that stuff and got as I got more into it. But to me, it's more the training I'm more obsessed with. And then so when I go yeah. to fires, hey, I, I can use this. And then also, like turnout gear, all my gear is custom. Like you get it issued, and then I take it back to like turnout in Jersey City and be like, all right, tweak this, work this. <laughs> I'm a little guy. I want it more comfortable. Yeah, Get that. rid of this braided yeah. pocket. I don't use it. You know, all different stuff. And I learned like like, like that everyone used to post like, what's in your pocket? What do you carry? You know what? Right. Less is more. My whole theory is mm-hmm. if you can grab the tool with your structure glove and use it at a fire, carry it. If you're, if you can, a lot of guys carry tools and all the shit that rips their gear and all that extra weight. If you're not going to use it in the fire, don't carry it in your gear. I'm not, I mean, you know, if you want to, you can, but for me, it's less is more. I literally have a pair of leather gloves, a bailout, my, my pants pocket. My jacket, I have, um, it's an eight foot webbing for dragging a down fireman. And the only reason I carry that is because my captain's a large American. He's a big dude. So if I have to drag his 200 plus pound ass out of a burning building, I want to be able to. I'm gonna need some help. Like I yeah, work I'm out need some just help. so I have to pull his ass out because he's a big dude. Right. Uh, he can pick me it. up with his pinky and toss me. So <laughs> I carry that little webbing just for him, and then I have like a pull down dive knife that won't rust, and it's, you know, worry about opening it up, and it's serrated on one side, and that way I can right. cut wire, rope, whatever. You know, less is more. One little flashlight. You know, nothing crazy. So at no, minimum, I, keep the I, weight I, down, keep the speed up. Well, I love that, right? But everything you're talking about is intentional. Yes. And in, intention matters because details matter. 100%. Right? So, yeah. yeah I so, all I mean, the stuff I, up from between, like, senior guys and, like, <sighs> making things easier. And also, look, for instance, the Navy SEALs. Every piece of sound cheesy, but every piece of their equipment is tailored or specced for them for their specific job. So, like, right. when I chauffeur... When I drive, I carry um, – I got this from Brian Butler. It's a three-feet piece of rope with little hooks on the end for screen doors. I'll run up and right. chalk off a screen door so when the hose gets charged, we're not dealing with the door shutting all the time. We're getting closed on. Right. And, like, when I drive, I'll carry um, – like, for car fires or forced entry, I'll carry my personal pry bar uh, – pro bar, I mean, uh, when I drive. When I'm not driving, I don't carry that because I'll probably lose it or whatever. I'm too – you know. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, there's – Everything I, I do at work is for a reason. I'm extremely OCD, and it's mostly with cleaning the rig and cleaning at home, but also my equipment, my gear, and then make sure it's where I want it and make sure where it's supposed to be so when we need it, we, ha- we have it. And what what that does is it sets you up every single day to be the, identical to the day before, which allows you to do your job to the very best. What I love too is it becomes intentional and then that intent rubs off on the other guys. And if Riley's got his shit squared away at two company and I want to be there, I should have my shit squared away too. Yeah. Like I kind of tell a lot of the guys that too. I'm like, like, they don't even have to tell them the new guys. They just see see me. Like I, I, we have a thing called a foxtail, the little broom. One of the senior guys called it a foxtail when I first got on. I, I'm like, what the fuck's that? Okay. I'm like, this guy's fucking with me. Right. I have no idea what that is. I look <laughs> it up. And back then we had flip phones. So you didn't have Google on your phone back then. I actually had to go on right, a computer right. and yep. look it up. And I'm like, what the hell's a foxtail? And it's the little broom with the uh, dustpan and broom. And I right. get all the dirt out from where you stand, you know, on the floor of the rig, driver behind the gas pedal, all that right. stuff. Now I just shop back because it's faster. But I do that every shift. And then also my That's senior awesome. captain would wouldn't let us go a shift without washing the rig every single right. shift. Even if it looks spotless, we still wash it every shift. It's good. And you know what? If you wash the rig, you get your fire. So same thing like you when you're painting tools or you're oiling them or you're grinding them or getting them clean, you end up catching a job. It's like no, you know, nothing you do is for no reason. Like you're doing it all for a reason. That's right. It's, I mean, yeah. it's company pride. It's being ready. And it's also like you go to other companies and, you know, 
you might have one or two guys from training on the tour that are doing this, and then other guys aren't. So I, I just awesome. like to have the same routine. I literally come in, sit down, have coffee. First thing I do is I punch in. And I'm like, morning, morning, like I'm an old freaking man. I get that from my grandfather, my dad. So it's like just something right. that I don't think about, it, just do it. And then I'll sit down and then they'll wind me up. And then they do it on purpose because then they know that John and Tom, you're going to have to deal with that afterwards. And I'm going hot and heavy probably to like 10, 10, 30, 11 after that, after all the chores and or training, or whatever's going on for the day or running calls. Last couple of shifts, we had like two, three calls the second we walked in. So like yeah. you got to like get all your shit. So that's why I'm big on having all your stuff squared away first thing in the morning. Like, get your gear on the rig or next to it so they can get their stuff off, ready to go. And then I'm not saying mop and do the chores and wash the rig. Just get your equipment ready to go so when a call does what? come in, you go. And that way they, ready. they can go. Yeah. Yes. And then you can I love have it. coffee and shoot the shit for, like, you know, 20 minutes, half hour. You know, find out what's wrong with the rig or what needs repaired. Or, hey, we had a call here and – we learned this about this building or this call sucked and we, you know, next time don't do that kind of thing. And that's how we, we, I, we talk shop a lot in the morning with the previous tour, the following tours. Like I need, I used to talk shop a lot, but now I'm like, I need to get the hell out of there because I take my girls to school, but priorities the change morning, like, for sure. I, I'm There's going no doubt, tomorrow morning. But I can't wait for the morning because all the guys there love going to fires on both tours and we talk right. about whatever it is. And if I happen to miss a fire, and then they fill me in about it. Now I know, hey, hey the rig was topped off of water with fuel. Now we top the, f- the rig off of fuel every shift, but so does the tour before us. They don't miss. Right. They're aggressive. Right. They want to be there. They. I can't complain about well, any the, of the tours. The, the Although company, we do the company around, expects we blame them. everything on tour too because we never see them. That's right. So we never right. see well, them too. How... We blame everything yep. on them. They're a great freaking tour, but we don't tell it them to their face. And now they're probably going to see I them and it. make fun of me. But yeah. <laughs> It is I, it it's is. just, it's, yeah, I mean, it just speaks to who you are. The intention and the consistency behind your message um, goes a very long way. Mike, awesome. You said you had nothing to talk about. Yeah, well. You filled up an hour, no problem, boss. <laughs> you got me going. I love it. Wow, that's what the guys do to you, too. Yeah. And I can see it because, listen, that's why I wanted you to have, that's why I wanted to have you on. The excitement that you bring the energy level that you bring, it, it makes a difference. And, like, we need guys like that in our firehouses because it makes our firehouses better, bro. They always do. I, and, I don't uh, want to work because uh, you only work, you know, 24 on, 72 off. So when I'm in, I'm 100% in. You're in. Yeah. Yeah. There's a lot to that, pal. I appreciate you taking time out of your day today to join me. I know we had to reschedule this because I shot down the North Carolina and we had to rebook this. But uh, thanks for doing that last minute and finding some time away from that beautiful family of yours. Thank um, you. Know, in yet. <laughs> they're coming any minute now. So, but listen, I just I appreciate you, um, and I I think that you have a lot to offer and bring to the table. And I think I think you've set the bar very high in your own company and protecting. The, the yeah. guys, that the legacy that came before you there. It means a lot. Super important. Yeah. Pass it on. Keep Thank going, you. bro. I appreciate, I appreciate you, very, you much. very much. Yeah, thanks for joining me today. Um, Mike Riley, everyone. West Orange, New Jersey Fire Department. Rock star, man. Guy told me no. It's ridiculous. <laughs> Get out of here. Thanks. Anyway, Mike, you're always welcome back, pal. You seem to be loosened up now. Now you're uh, ready now to I run. Good. Yeah, well, so, it's the, uh, the happy juice. I get it. It's part of it. Don't worry about it. Yeah, I need well, to I my nerves were like, I don't want to talk about myself, you know? Well, <laughs> we did. You did just fine, sir. Appreciate just it. fine. I think a lot of people will be able to relate with the message that you shared today for sure. But um, I just want to say thanks. Thanks for joining me. Let me sign off the podcast. I'm going to come right back to you. Hang out. Got okay. It. Thank you. Cool. Everyone, thanks for tuning in for another episode of the National Fire Radio podcast. Mike Riley out of West Orange, New Jersey. What a great great story today a story of consistency and intent i think that all matters and it makes us good makes us better anyway thanks for tuning in and do me a favor take the conversation take it back to the firehouse and talk about it because when we talk about the job we are making the job better we'll see you at the next one jeremy national fire radio national fire radio